let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for being here and uh, welcome, welcome to iDignity's monthly volunteer check-in. It's so, so, so good to see all of your faces and just such a refreshing thing to, um, to feel this community around us, even though right now this community um, looks like a lot of little blocks on Zoom, right? Um, it's, it's wonderful to see everybody and to, um, to find to find this family once a month with you guys. So uh, my name is Danielle Landel. I'm the program director here at iDignity. And uh, on behalf of everybody here, all the volunteers and staff, we thank you for, for spending a little time with, with us this morning and for your continued support and love uh, for the efforts. We know that some of you can't, can't make it to serve in person and we totally understand that and respect that. And uh, certainly wanna make sure that, that uh, that safety and health is top priority. And so when things are safe again, we can't wait to see you and hug you. And in the meantime, we will not see you and hug you and uh, see you virtually. Um, as we mentioned, everybody is muted initially and during the question time, we will, um, we will be able to have you unmute yourselves. Would you like to start out every, every check-in with a prayer? And today, of course, is, is no different. Um, I'd like to invite Pastor Emily from First United Methodist Church to join us. Emily, you will have to unmute yourself and uh, I'll give you the floor here. Great, it's a joy to be here with you. I see some of my First Church Orlando people on the call, which is so lovely to see your faces this morning. I'm a big fan of um, lines. There we oh, go. Emily, oh, okay, perfect. Okay, good. Um, I'm a big fan of blessings. And so I'd like to offer a blessing for you this morning. I invite you to hold out your hands. Um, if you can have them on this on the camera, great. But I just invite you to hold out your hands uh, that we may receive this blessing together today, uh, that we may receive this, this blessing from God and also um, allow it to bless each other. So let's pray together. Gracious God, be in our minds and in our thoughts and in our ideas. God, be in our eyes and in our looking. May we see you and the people around us. May we see others as your children, created in your image, gifted with the dignity and worth. God, be in our mouths and the words that we say. May they be words of blessing and words of grace. God, be in our ears that we may listen and understand. God, be in our hearts and in our loving. God, be in our hands and in our serving. Whether that's serving directly with clients, whether that's serving behind the scenes, whether that's serving remotely and virtually. God, may we seek to serve you and the people we encounter. We pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Emily, for, for doing that and uh, for joining us today. Um, all right, we're gonna get rolling on, on the next parts of this. Um, as a reminder for logistics, welcome to those of you who have just hopped in. You are all muted to prevent any background noise. Um, if you have a question, feel free to uh, throw that in the chat box. We will have a time towards the end to kind of go over that. Um, ben will be moderating the meeting. Thank you, Ben. And uh, he'll unmute you when we cover your question towards the end. All right. So we're going to get started. Um, we uh, still obviously uh, have have our sponsors, have our corporate sponsors and our church sponsors. And even though we're not doing the large scale 250 client events, we are still actively serving clients. And we're so excited to share you share with you a little bit more about what's going on with that. Um, but we want to talk about the people who help make this possible. And our event sponsor for this, our month sponsor for this uh, for this month is actually Orange County Tax Collector's Office. And um, Orange County Tax Collector's Office has been such an amazing, amazing partner, especially, they've, they've always been, right? They've always um, understood and fought for the value of people having identification. And they have worked with us and coached us and taught us and, and bent over backwards to make sure that, that our clients could get assistance because often the people we serve um, don't have anywhere else to turn. They've hit a dead end and that's why we 
exist to be a, to be an advocate for them. But there's no, no, no way that we could do any of this without without the tax collector's office. And uh, and through the pandemic, um, I just can't say can't say enough about how much they have done. Um, above and beyond anything we ever anticipated in, in what they could do to help us help our clients. They've come up with creative ways of serving. They've, um, they've allowed us to, to call them on a regular basis and, uh, and ask for things. And they're just, they're doing so, so, so much behind the scenes to make sure that, that this new model works. And so, um, so we want to do a huge, huge thank you to Scott Randolph and to his, his full office. And uh, Scott actually was able to join us today. So thank you so much for Scott for joining us. Um, would you like to say a couple of words and kind of introduce yourself? That would be wonderful. Um, sure. Can you hear me at this point? All right. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you, Danielle. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for being on the call and, and being great volunteers with iDignity. I'm, I'm always amazed before pre-pandemic, pre whenever I would pop by and see the number and the num not only the number of volunteers, but the dedication of those volunteers and, and the in-depth knowledge uh, of those volunteers on such complicated issues. iDignity does an amazing job not just of uh, bringing in volunteers, but really making them effective. It's, it's, uh, it can be tough in a volunteer organization to really make, I think, the volunteers feel like they really accomplished something. And I think iDignity does that better than any organization I have ever seen. Uh, you all have such a great, dedicated group. Uh, it's amazing. And it's because iDignity does such great work and such important work. So thank you and a great shout out to all the volunteers that have made this organization run and all the staff uh, as well uh, that continue to make iDignity run even during these uh, interesting times. So I, I know it's been hard and hard, not just on operations, but you know, as, as nonprofits rely upon the generosity of, of donors and, and the community, it, it can be hard financially as well on a, on a lot of nonprofits. And so remember that as you get into your year-end giving out there, uh, that iDignity is there for your year-end giving too. Not to make that pitch. They did not ask me to make that pitch, <laughs> but um, again, it, you know, so many people, it's, it's not just operational challenges, but it's, it's financial challenges that nonprofits face during these times. So. Yeah, you know, we're always happy to partner with iDignity. They do great work. Um, they help the complicated cases that we can't efficiently help in our office. Uh, we'd have no ability to really do that, um, that type of in-depth work that iDignity does that's needed uh, in, in these cases to get um, IDs. And um, as, as all your volunteers know how important that ID is, people most people think of it as just something they put in their wallet, but um, it is a needed piece of, uh, it's a needed document, uh, a, a critical document for a lot of people to, uh, again, be able to apply for jobs, be able to apply for benefits, for to move around, uh, just to move around freely and uh, takes those type of documents. And iDignity goes, of course, well over and beyond to make sure that that happens for the most vulnerable in our society. Um, and that's, that's such an incredible service to the community. So my, my shout out to all the staff at iDignity, but my special shout out to, especially shout out to, to all the volunteers who show up and, and dedicate such good time to, to that organization. You all are amazing. You have a great, amazing volunteer base that I know uh, a lot of nonprofits in this world would be very, very jealous of. And it's because you all do a great job. And it's because you do a great job of including the volunteers and making them feel a part and of the organization and giving them good work to do while they're there. And um, that's a, a reflection on, on, you know, the, the leadership of iDignity and, and their ability to know how to uh, operate an organization and, and bring in the volunteers like they do. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you for letting us be a part of the organization. Thank you for letting us help you. Uh, we're always there uh, to help the community. Uh, so um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Danielle. And thank you, Scott. Thanks for for jumping in and and what what awesome words. And uh, and you're absolutely right. It's the volunteer base is um, is something that just this team and this family is just something that's so unheard of. Um, and we we feel blessed and honored um, to be a part of it with with everybody. You know, so this is uh, 
really, really a neat space. So thank you for all that, that you guys do and, uh, and especially for joining us today. Thank you. I, I just want to give one personal shout out to Scott. Hey, Scott. Just, hey, Mike. It's, it's, uh, just amazing how you've revolutionized the DMV, um, the, the issuance of IDs and driver's license at your office. You know, it, it's been the butt of jokes for years about the DMV and, and you provide a, a much better service, much uh, no, nothing against the DMV. Uh, <laughs> it's done a really, really good job. It's just such a, you know, it's just a small portion of your overall responsibility as a tax collector. And I just appreciate all you do with that. Um, and also, I want to let everyone know that uh, Scott invited me to his swearing in ceremony uh, when he was elected tax collector. And the very, very absolute first action he took at that podium after being sworn in was to waive the fees, the service fees for IDs and driver's license for iDignity's clients. It was the very first action you took. Um, yeah. uh, this meant a lot to me and was uh, just wanted to make sure that everyone else was aware of that. So thank you for all you've done. Thank you for picking up the phone when I call um, and keep up the great work. Well, thank you. And we'll always try to pick up that phone. Thank you, Michael. And, and uh, again, we couldn't do our job without you. Uh, you, you handle so many very, very difficult cases that we could never handle in the offices. And, and I honestly think we could not do our job without you. And uh, if I may, if I may, um, Scott, your leadership is not only as far as policy, but I will tell you, um, we really appreciate uh, your people. They have a heart for the community. They go above and beyond. Um, they come up with um, imaginative solutions for us. Um, you know, they, they help us find the solution. So this is a great partnership and, um, the, the people that work in your offices not only do their job well, but they do it with, with creativity, with compassion and, and, and excellence. And so we, we so much appreciate you and your staff there. It's just a wonderful organization and that reflects on the leadership. So we appreciate your leadership. So Thank you, Tom. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, well, thank you again, Scott, for joining us today, and uh, and we so appreciate again all that all that you do. I'll, I'll stay um, until I hit the nine thirty mark. I got it. Perfect. I'm you're, you're, you're welcome to stay as long <laughs> as you can. Thanks so much. All right, and then um, so so uh, we're gonna get on into our mission here again. Thank you, Scott, for being here, and thank you, First United Methodist Church, for um, for being our church sponsor for today. Um. So we, we always start with going back to our mission, and, and I think that's really important, especially as we are uh, serving a little, bit, a little bit more remotely and in different capacities. Um, so as a reminder, iDignity's mission is to restore dignity and hope by assisting individuals in regaining legal proof of their identity. We are founded on some values that we, that we expect all of us to adhere to, dignity, excellence, stewardship, empowerment, compassion, and justice. And uh, I've been thinking about empowerment this month and uh, hearing, hearing stories of clients coming in and we're, we're starting slowly and, uh, and, and hearing these clients who, who have been struggling, not only with, with COVID, right? I mean, COVID's been enough of a struggle in the last couple months, but living without ID and what things that's prevented them from doing and what things that identification now helps them do. We've had people who are able to get into housing over the last couple of months. We've had people who have been able to be eligible for jobs again. And, uh, and it's such a beautiful thing to see how this little piece of plastic, right? It's, it, it, it holds so much, it holds so much in helping them prove who they are, feel identity, feel dignity, um, but also to be empowered to do so many greater things that you never think we're, we're hinging on, on having one piece, one, one document that helps them prove who they are. So I've just loved kind of hearing those stories and watching, watching how that, um, how, how these small steps towards, towards helping them make such, such huge changes in their lives. Um, we have a couple announcements, and they're they're probably pretty similar to what we've gone over the last couple of months. But we'll continue to do these uh, these monthly check-ins. I think that I personally love seeing you all, and I know that um, that it, it, again with everybody serving in very different capacities, it's such a blessing to be able to see everybody. 
um, as much as we can here. Um, we'll do our best to keep you updated and, uh, and keep you in the loop and keep you involved as much as you're able to and as much as we can. Um, we are still uh, still looking for volunteers for identification service days. Um, as a reminder, identification service days are a new model. Um, it holds, we hold events three days a week. So we've bumped up to three days and it's from 8.30 to 12.30 on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, as we increase capacity of clients, we're going to need more and more volunteers, which is awesome. And so if you only, if you feel safe and if you, um, if you want to get involved, we would love to see you and love to have you join us. And, uh, and if not, we totally, totally respect that and want to make sure that you feel comfortable. Um, we do have a couple virtual volunteer opportunities as well. So it's a lot more uh, phone call based with clients. And if you're interested in either of those opportunities, please let Bielka know. You'll just go to idignity.org slash volunteer. It's that same link that you've always signed up for events at. And uh, we'll take you through a little, a little new um, orientation of what things are looking like now and uh, get a feel for what you're looking for there. So if you are still interested in serving in either of those capacities, um, feel free to let Levielka know through that website and uh, we would love to connect with you a little bit more about those opportunities. So we started um, at and uh, we started by whew, we started our identification service days at Jackie's place uh, last month. So we're about a month in, and as we as I've mentioned and as I mentioned last month, we are starting slowly. Um, we wanted to make sure that everything is safe and as safe as possible before we start filling up the space, because it's always easier to add in more spaces and add in more capacity. It's a lot harder to pull it back, especially if we were too risky at the beginning and there were any any um, health issues or health concerns. And so we have started slow. We are ramping up um, the amount of clients that we're serving on a daily basis. But even with starting slow over the last month, I have some statistics for you that you might find interesting. So over the last month, we've served um, 84 clients at identification service days as in person. 75 of them were unique, so we had a couple people who had to come back a second time or something, but that's still 75 unique people um, in a space that, that we have felt that it's been very, um, very carefully and intentionally slow, right? So, um, so to me, that's an amazing number because that means that, um, that speeding it up just a little bit is going to mean that we're going to be able to help close to... And, and what my goal is, is that we can be close to the, the impact they were, that we were making at those monthly events, just a lot more spread out over, over the course of four or five weeks. Um, in addition to those 75 individuals that were served, um, some of those clients were started out being done virtually. And so um, we are doing uh, virtual intake and legal interviews over the phone or over Zoom. And 86 of those have been completed over the last month. And so uh, some of those 75 started out being served virtually, and some of those served virtually haven't even been seen in person yet. And so those are just amazing numbers to me. And so um, kudos to the team that is serving virtually. Thank you for, um, for figuring it out with us. Yvonne's been doing a whole lot, Becky. And, uh, and we're building up those teams um, because it makes a huge difference. And, uh, and the idea, and it, it seems so, so contrary to a dignity's values and it's been a really a real struggle but um, the idea is that COVID can spread through length of time with somebody right and so if we're spending an hour doing an interview with somebody we are we are putting more and more people at at risk and so um, the more we can do over the phone and virtually and in small interactions the better it is for everybody involved because again safety is top priority and so um, so it's been awesome seeing all these clients coming in who have already done these interviews who come in maybe just to get get a voucher for an ID or a birth certificate or just sign a document because we're ready for them and so that's been absolutely incredible so that was 86 people served um, served virtually and then we've issued 44 vouchers uh, for IDs and we've started documents, our birth certificate documents out of state, 36 of them, and we've started 27 Florida birth certificates over the last month. We've had 28 unique volunteers um, serve over the last month, and so we are just absolutely thrilled, thrilled about these numbers. It's going in definitely the right direction, and we're so excited about what these numbers mean um, as, we, as we continue to increase capacity. So I was excited to share those numbers with you. I know they seem a lot slower than that 200 to 250, but um, um, but for us, it, it's, 
it was intentional that that we are starting carefully and so um so to see to see that kind of impact when we know we can have so much more space to to increase is just amazing so i'm going to go ahead and uh, move on into the next section here i'm going to invite ann our director of philanthropy up and she has a couple updates and announcements thanks ann Hey, awesome volunteers and friends of iDignity. It is so great to see you all. I meet with a lot of nonprofits every week. And honestly, I don't think there's another nonprofit in Central Florida that has the connection with volunteers like we have every single month. So kudos to you all for showing up and continuing to stay engaged. Um, the entire staff appreciates all of you and the support you offer just by showing up here. It just does so much for our heart. Um, some of you have even gone a step further. Um, you've signed up to be a gold star giver. Yay, that's been awesome. Some of you have sent a check to show your support. And some of you, as Danielle said, have started volunteering either on site or by at home by calling clients and finding other ways to help. One volunteer even made us cookies, which was amazing. Oh. So thank you. Um, I just want to take a minute to tell you about another way you can be involved, which is through our Super Duper, which has gone viral this year. October 22nd, we're going to gather on uh, doing watch parties in your home or on Zoom. It's a very simple model, but it's a very impactful way that you can gather friends and family either in your backyard or in your home, a small group of uh, 10 or 12. You might serve soup, you might serve cocktails, you might serve dessert, or you might gather people on Zoom just like this. We're gonna have a really good, strong program. We have an amazing client story, which is going to be a video. And at one point in the evening, you're gonna simply share your screen or turn on your TV. And we will have a YouTube, um, program which will be no more than 45 minutes and it will be much like if you've been to the super duper we do a really great program where michael speaks and we have some advocates and we have a client story and then there is an ask so we need your help we need to raise money as scott said so eloquently we need you to be thinking about giving to idignity as the year comes to a close I heard a statistic recently that 50% of our nonprofits will not be here next year at this time. That's a scary statistic and we do not want to fall in that category. I don't think we will. We are strong financially and that's because of each of you. So take a minute to give the super duper some thought, reach out to me or Bialka if you want to be involved and we will follow up with you, guide you step by step. Again, it's a very easy process and each of you can do your part. Um, I just wanna mention that we already have two sponsors for this great event, Advent Health and the City of Orlando are both sponsoring this event. So we're gonna be in good company. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions. Have a happy Labor Day weekend ahead and a great September. Great to see you all. Thanks, Anne. All right, um, we're going to jump into the golden ticket. And I realized this morning that I didn't give this person an, a heads up. And I don't think he's here. So this is going to be a major surprise to him. So we're just going to talk about him behind his back. And then um, we'll show him this video later. Um, my fault. Uh, but but uh, this this month's golden ticket award, um, as as many of you know, every month we do, we do a golden ticket. And what that is, is a volunteer award for somebody who's really just um, stood out or made a, made a huge impact um, either in a client's life or in iDignity's life and uh, and we, we want to acknowledge that kind of stuff and that kind of impact. So this volunteer um, actually recently joined us. He started maybe gosh a year, year and a half ago maybe. I don't know. I don't understand time anymore in COVID. Um, but, but he started more recently after after he had actually retired and uh, and he, he came in and uh, just started silently helping us. Um, he would find things to do. He would help out with spreadsheets because he's really good at spreadsheets. Um, he would help clean up and, and take down and actually uh, stepped into the leadership team um, fairly quickly after he had started volunteering with us. He has just this, this quiet, steady leadership that just uh, 
makes you want to makes you want to follow him and makes you want to to work with him. Um, he's been willing to learn anything and everything lately. Um, I've stuck him in front of new forms and said, just try it. I'm going to watch you do it and see what breaks. Um, he's been a guinea pig for so much stuff, but has really, really helped with, with developing a lot of these procedures. And uh, it's just really thoughtful in how he's, how he's going through these, these uh, uh, crazy amounts of new things he's learning. So today, I want to give a shout out to Jonathan Wright um, for his dedication to iDignity and for, for how much he's been He's been doing and impacting this organization. And Jonathan, when you watch this, I'm sorry I didn't tell you ahead of time, and we will get you a golden ticket. Um, but we are we are just honored to to work with you and to serve with you. Um, all right, so we're going to jump into our, our question time. I'm going to invite Michael to hop in first um, to say a couple words, and then um, I'll be watching chat, and we'll uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, thanks everyone once again for being here. It really is a joy to see all your faces. I love just scrolling through and, and watching you, um, listening to Danielle. Uh, you know, this can get a little bit lonely, especially after five or six months. And just, you know, we can't be together in person with this is what we got and, and I'll take it if it's, if it's what we are left with. But I just really, really appreciate you all making the extra effort. Um, to chime in for half an hour once a month and, and just get together. I, I hope we can continue this because uh, you cannot understand how much this means to the staff because um, we miss you dearly. Um, not just because you're wonderful people, but also because you were just, you're so supportive of the organization. Um, and it's just great to be reminded of that and great to see your all's faces. And I, uh, and I welcome anyone to chime in with any thoughts or, or, or questions that you have. Um, I do have uh, two announcements to make. Um, first is good news. Uh, we did have a promotion in iDignity uh, in the last couple of weeks and uh, Danielle has been rightly promoted to uh, program director, um, no longer program coordinator. Yay! And she's joined the iDignity staff now on as salary um, versus hourly. Um, and she's going to have management responsibilities more over program and specifically with uh, our wonderful resource coordinator, Yelka. Um, and so they'll be working more closely together as a, as a team and, um, uh, and looking forward to that. You know, we've been going through a massive amount of changes in how iDignity operates and our delivery of service. Um, and it just, uh, I think that this will help in that process as well. And so well-deserved to Danielle and I'm really excited about that and excited about the team between her and Bielka working well. Um, the other news is not as, it's not as happy, um, but, but still a, a transition, a lot of transition going on these days. Um, the wonderful Robin has decided to resign from iDignity to hang her own shingle and do part-time consulting. Um, and so she has uh, given her three weeks notice, um, thank, thanks for the extra week, um, and uh, probably will even be doing a little bit of consulting for iDignity um, at some point. So she's uh, just done a wonderful job um, helping us manage almost half a million dollars in grants a year um, and reporting on those and her sidekick Gail is on here and Gail's been with me doing grants for 10 years. Um, <laughs> uh, so Robin, you will, you will be greatly missed. I would, I would, um, and I appreciate me and Robin have spent four or five hours on, on Zoom calls together going through grants and writing grants and reporting on grants before. And I enjoyed those times. It might have been a little longer than I wish, but it was just, I think we made a really good team at times. Um, and I, I'm going to miss that teamwork. Um, we love Robin. If you have a couple words to say to all your fans, thank you for your nice words, Michael. Um, I say that um, I have loved working with um, all of the volunteers and the staff at iDignity. It's it's really the people that make iDignity such a special place, and I appreciate all the support that um, I've received from 
all the volunteers, especially those that served on my shepherds team and on the grant committee. Uh, Gail was an absolute lifesaver so many times. And um, our golden ticket winner, Jonathan, was um, he used his magic to help me through some really tricky grant assignments with um, just really simplifying the process. And Jeff Brown, um, just so many, so many wonderful volunteers. And I just appreciate all the support. And um, just, you know, I, I, when I made my announcement with the staff, I said, you know, I, I, hope that we're transitioning from coworkers to lifelong friends. And I hope that's true with, with all of you volunteers as well. Yeah, we're gonna miss you, Robin, but now you can come and volunteer. Can't volunteer as a staff person, but now you can come volunteer. Um, uh, any other thoughts for Robin? Any questions for me or that I can uh, bounce off to Tom or Ben or Danielle? Um, would love to hear some some thoughts and insights or comments if anyone has any. There was one question from Lynn. Um, how did the homeless use Zoom? And that's a great question, Lynn. Um, Michael, do you want me to field that one a minute? Yeah, I mean, I'll start. Um, and I think it's a position that iDignity is uniquely in for um, or, or set up for. It's kind of like the last mile of deliveries. You know, stuff comes by train and then goes on truck. And then how do you get it to the houses? Um, or how do you get on transportation just for individuals? That last mile, that's why you see all these electric scooters and stuff around town. Um, and it's kind of the same with access for uh, Dignity's clients to computer systems. That is the last mile. The, the government agencies and, and the services are right there on the other side of the screen. Um, and, and with Jackie's Place, that, that is that connection. Um, that is that kind of last mile, the connection to the internet for clients. Because it is hard for clients to get access to computers. Uh, I don't think the library is even open back for their computer systems yet. A lot of the social service agencies that might have had computer systems, that's still not open even if, even if they're open yet. Um, so I, I'll, I'll let Danielle run with it from there. But I think that's one of the beautiful things about Jackie's Place is it is a place that for identification services, clients can come and access that computer and engage with all the depth of what iDignity can do. And thanks to wonderful people like Scott Randolph um, and the Orange County Health Department, we can engage the client with the agents at those offices remotely. They can hop on a Zoom call so we can have Tom representing the client, the client on the call. We can have Orange County Tax Collector and Orange County Health Department on the, on the Zoom call at the same time. And by the grace of God, those government agencies have agreed to set aside an agent for us that would be willing to jump on those calls when iDignity is open. So we still maintain that engagement of those government agencies, which is truly a remarkable thing because those government agencies haven't interacted on a Zoom call before with each other, much less with a client. And so it's, you know, it's kudos to them for adapting to this time of a pandemic and how can they continue to help iDignity's clients and, and potentially revolutionize how they manage um, geographically distant individuals. Danielle, anything to add to that? Yeah, um, Lynn, I think you might be referring to when I mentioned um, the virtual CIIs, right? Perfect. So, um, so what we do when a volunteer, when a client expresses a need to us, um, this is kind of how this is, this process is working right now. So we're trying to do appointment only at, at Jackie's place to help us best prepare for the clients. So case managers or clients can call in and uh, case managers actually have a form they can fill out. That gives us a little more information on the client before we ever meet with them. That allows us to check on a lot of cool stuff. Like, are they, are they gold star compliant? They, you know, did they meet those real ID um, requirements? Um, but it also allows us in that questionnaire, whether we're on the phone with the client or whether a case manager is reaching out, to know if the client has the ability to do this virtual uh, comprehensive initial interview, this intake and legal, over the phone or over Zoom. And so a lot of times case managers can connect us with technology. If the client can't, we are more than happy to meet with them here. Um, and then we just schedule a time to do that interview here in person. Um, if a client can't even call in and make an appointment 
with us, uh, we do have clients who walk up and uh, as you know, with, with the population we serve or with any population, not everybody shows up for all their appointments, right? And so, so we've been really grateful that the amount of walk-ups we've had uh, kind of even out a few of the people who don't show up. So that allows us to do those in person as well. Um, so, so that kind of, we, we, we try to feel out whether they even have access to technology right at the beginning. And that kind of directs how we, how we handle that next step of, of whether we're going to do a virtual intake and legal or if we're going to do it in person. Does that answer the question? Good question. Really great question. Any other thoughts or questions or comments or I saw a lot of kudos to Danielle and cheers to Robin. Um, appreciate that. But any other thoughts, questions? All right. Danielle. Awesome. And if you do encounter any questions or have any questions about safety procedures or anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we're more than happy to, to go over any, any concerns or questions that you guys have. Um, again, you guys are still, this team is still the ones who are, are pulling this organization forward and pushing it forward. And, and we want to make sure that you feel comfortable with everything that we're, um, that we're doing as well. Um, I did want to, uh, <laughs> I, I sent mes a message to Jonathan here, but I don't know if he saw it. Jonathan, you're the golden ticket winner today. Yay! Yay. He just tapped in. Yay! Good job, Jonathan. Um, I don't know if he's if he's available to speak, and I'm not going to throw him on the on the spot here. But Jonathan, I did want to acknowledge that you were able to hop in, and uh, thank you, thank you uh, in person here for for all that you're doing. Um, again, sorry, Jonathan. Thank you, Daniel. I'm, I was very surprised, very pleased. <laughs> Sorry, I, I've only seen you a couple times in the last week. That, that was that was me, I think, dropping the ball. So, um, but no thank problem. you again for all that you're doing. It's very well deserved. It's good to get out of the house in these crazy days. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Jonathan even learned how to use our fogger last week. So, if you ever need anything fogged, Jonathan knows how to use the fogger. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're going to head, head on into the end here and uh, just finish up. Oh, and Lynn, yes, you are more than welcome to come by Jackie's place. We'd be happy to give you a little tour, or if you want to come by when we don't have anybody in there, just let us know, and uh, we're happy to, to show you around. Um, it's, it's a really cool space, and the team that, that did all the building on that, Hap and Debbie and Curly, uh, the stations are really, really impressive, so we're, we're happy to show you around. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and end with a quote here, and uh, this one is by Nelson Mandela. For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. So today, as you head on into, into your lives, whatever that looks like, um, I, I encourage you to, um, to work to empower people around you and to enhance the freedom of, of other people, whether it's emotionally or physically or over the phone, right? But um, you're, you're doing good work with, with whatever capacity you can do right now. And so we are just honored to be on this journey with you. Um, may God bless your compassionate generosity and uh, stay safe. It's good to see you all.